Welcome to another episode of Steve Scissors Does the Study Guide uh, for Mr. Temple's class. Now, we weren't going to do one of these, but, you know, I mean, things being the way they are, and Mr. Temple being gone, I figure, well, this might... Crap, it's my phone! Hold on just a second. Okay, sorry about that, man. Um, that was my kids. They needed a ride uh, to culinary school. They were going to cut up some things and stuff. So anyway, anyway, we got to get busy with the study guide, so here we go. The first question on the study guide is, is the pH of a solution is 4.3, is it acidic or basic? Well, that's a pretty easy one because the pH scale is between 0 and 14. And then the upper half of that's basic and the lower half is acidic. So this one would be acidic. Okay, now it's time for the second one. Okay, number two. If the pH of pool water was 8.9, is the water more acidic or basic? Uh, I think we just covered that one. It's definitely going to be basic because it's above 7. Which brings us to question number 3, which asks, um, what is the pH of a solution that is neutral? Um, that's not acidic or basic either. So the acidic uh, and not the basic is uh, totally neutral and that would be pH 7. Okay, the next question that is on the study guide talks about a pool. And this goes back to our CSI lab where we were talking about there's a dead guy, the dead guy next to the pool. The pool itself is uh, filtered with uh, is salt. It's a salt pool. And it has a pH of 7. And then uh, the pH of the lung, of the water in the guy's lungs, the dead guy, is 4.5. So what does that say? What kind of information can you collect? Well, here's the deal. If the pH doesn't match up from the pool and the water in his lungs was 4.5, guess what? That dude did not drown in that pool. He must have drowned somewhere else and been dumped there. That's a bummer for him. His weekend is over. The next question deals with the periodic table, which is over there. You can see it through my, my hole right there, right there. Uh, we're talking about the four fundamental atoms that make up most of the organic chemicals. Well, that's a pretty simple one. Here, we'll zoom in and you can see them. Although it's kind of hard to see them because of the glare. It's carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, and then way over here on the other side, pipping by himself, is hydrogen. Those are the four, the four most important ones, in which most organic chemicals are made. Now, the next question deals with DNA. And DNA is a big molecule made up of several different parts. Well, one of the most important parts that deals with the code is called the codons. No, that's, that's, that's not the codons. Never mind. Forget I said that. They're called nitrogenous bases, and there's four of them. Here are all the names. The first one, its name is adenine. And most of the time, it's represented just by having the letter A. One of the other ones is thiamine, and it binds with the adenine. And uh, in the DNA code, it's represented by a T. And I'm sure you could guess why. That's because it starts you know, with the T. This one here, guanine, it's the third one. And uh, it binds with the fourth one, with which is uh, here, I'll show you in just a second. Here, I will type it out for you, okay? Here it goes. And then there's, that's the fourth one, uh, which is cytosine. And uh, it's represented by a C, right there. Here, I'll point to it, right there, there's the C. Represented by a C. So, A binds with T, and G binds with C. It's like a happy little couples there. Okay, one of the questions was, um, what does an unsaturated fat have that, uh, uh, that a saturated fat does not have? Well, an unsaturated fat, or, or, or back up a second. This right here, this is a saturated fat. Notice that all of the lines right here, the side chains, those are straight. There are no double bonds here because what an unsaturated fat has is double bonds. And the unsaturated fats, those are the ones that are not healthy for you. These, these aren't exactly healthy, but these are at least better. This is a saturated fat, no double bonds. Saturated fats, they have double bonds on those side chains right there. Got it? Okay, good. As we talk about fat, fat has a special property and a function on your body. Um, if you have too much of it, obviously it gets stored. And that's not a good thing because then you end up being a big lard of fat which is not very aerobic. Uh, you can't do much if you're a big lard. So if um, you need to get access to energy, let's say you don't have much food and you need energy, where are you going to get it? That's where you're going to get it. Your body stores extra energy. When you eat too much food, it stores it in a chemical like this. 
So that later on, when you are needing energy and sugar to go into your bloodstream so your body can work, it takes this stuff and changes it back into a sugar. So fat stores energy. That's what it does. Now this bad boy right here, this is cholesterol. Um, cholesterol comes in two forms. It comes in a form called the HDL, and then there's one called the LDL. Well, the HDL one <coughs> is the one that's not so bad for you. LDLs are the ones that really mess you up and cause um, the hardening of the arteries in your heart. It's bad news. This is a very funky looking chemical. It's crazy looking, but it's cool because it's, it's cholesterol and cholesterol has a cool shape. So anyway, cholesterol comes in two shapes, two sizes, uh, HDL and the LDL. And guess what this word sounds like? That's right. It looks like uh, it, something that comes out of you, like uh, the technical term for it. It's not pee pee, it's something else. It's uh, urine. That's right. And so this right here is the compound that your body creates when it breaks down proteins. So they used to be amino acids, now they turn into this. And then your kidneys filter them out, put them in your bladder, and flush, flush, it goes bye bye into the potty. Right there. That's urea. And the chemical you just saw was urea, and that was question number 12, I think. And uh, it's filtered out by your kidneys, fidney, your kidneys, yeah, hello, your kidneys, and then uh, it's created into a product that you're flushed out of your body. Well, it used to be an amino acid, and amino acids are used to make proteins. Now, this guy right over here, that is an amino acid. This guy is called methionine, and he's one of 18 different types of amino acids. So, this one type of amino acid is used to help create all the proteins on the planet. It's kind of crazy because, you know, you can make every protein on the planet from just these 18 different types of amino acids. That's kind of crazy. 18 amino acids it makes everything. It's nuts. It's totally nuts. Okay, now we're going to tackle questions 15 and 16 at like at the same time. This right here is a sugar. Uh, it's type, the type of sugar is called a disaccharide because there's two. Di means two. And so there's two sugars holding hands right here. I'll use my pointy end to point to it. There it is, right there. Pointy end where the two sugars are connected. This particular sugar is called dextrose and it's a combination of glucose and fructose. Those are the two two sugars right there. So uh, this is the type of fuel that your body can use right away. As soon as you eat it, your cells can use it to make energy. Uh, whereas fat, you know, fat has to be changed into this before it can actually be used by your body. Go figure. Okay, now real quick we're going to review. This right here, that chemical is what? If you said urea, you are correct. Now, how about this one? This one is the tricky one because this is the one that binds with thiamine, or, uh, what's that, thiamine in DNA. It's called adenine. This one is pretty easy because it's like right there. It's written on the screen. That's, that's cholesterol. This one is acetylcholine. That's a neurotransmitter and it's a chemical that goes between nerve cells. And if you turn it off, you can't feel anything. It's kind of crazy. This guy right here, that's the methionine. That is an amino acid. This puppy right there, that's what happens when the girl is kiss you on the cheek and you get all excited. That's called epinephrine, and it's the fight or flight molecule. This guy right here, well, we just talked about him. That's the sugar, and it's a disaccharide. That's the kind of sugar it is because there's two sugars here. This puppy right here, that is DNA, also known as deoxyribonucleic acid. It's good stuff. This guy right here, that's a fat. That's a fat jack. No, okay, well, that wasn't that funny, but this is a fat molecule. And it's a saturated fat molecule. And that says cytosine, which is cool. Okay, little people, <clears throat> it's time to get your test on. And uh, I wanted to write a little message here that says good luck because uh, it, the test is different than what you've taken before. But anyway, you're going to do great. I hope you will do great and we'll talk to you later. All right, ladies, bye-bye.